I know what I want for Christmas. I want a bench right there. I can build a bench. I, I've got some ideas, actually. Uh, no, no, no. I want you to build this one. That exact bench? That exact bench. Okay, so this time I'm gonna build her exactly what she asked for. She wants that anthropology bench, I'm gonna build just that, but what she doesn't know is I'm gonna build her a chair. That chair is gonna match that bed and that desk that I've already built for her. And I will say, she specifically months ago asked me not to build a chair, but I'm gonna do it anyways. I mean, she's 20 years old, what does she know? Now, I did recently overhear her talking to Katie about buying a chair. The number one thing that she requested is that the chair be comfortable. But the first thing we gotta do is go pick up some materials so let's go do that 30 long is all I need that's gorgeous if you guys are in the Oklahoma City area or just anywhere in a 5,000 mile radius you got to check this place out vintage reclaimed lumber they have beautiful beautiful kiln dried material tell them Johnny sent you we'll hook you up hey Johnny what are you doing man oh Hey, sorry man, just got a little distracted. Uh, yeah, we need to get back to work. Jeff's right, I definitely don't have time to sit around playing video games right now because it's a week before Christmas and in that time I have to build both a chair and a bench. This oak slab for this bench is twice as wide as what I needed so I'm gonna cut it down and carve in a faux live edge anywhere that I had to cut the slab with the jigsaw. I was uh, completely wrong. I thought this was uh, white oak, but upon planing it, it is very, very pink. This is 100% red oak. Over on the Avid, I'm carving the pieces for the wishbone legs for the bench. Again, this is meant to exactly mimic the anthropology bench that Chloe wants. I don't wanna waste a bunch of time focusing on the bench build, but here I'm putting the legs together with some domino mortises. And then I can go get started working on the chair. Switching gears to working on the chair, I need to get all this walnut milled up. So let's talk about the design of the chair, which I wanted to bring design elements from both her desk and her bed into this build. The bed features that curved headboard with maple dowels, and I'm gonna bring that element to the arms of this chair. And like both pieces, the chair is made from maple and walnut, and I'm trying to land somewhere between mid-century modern and boho because, well, that's what Chloe's into. And just like her dad, Chloe has great taste. You could even say the walnut doesn't fall far from the old walnut tree. Okay, these are the pieces that go on the bottom and the top of the chair back. It's gonna kinda cap the whole thing off. You saw those other pieces that I cut that had the recess where the cushion's gonna go. But the challenge is, is this chair needs to lean backwards at a nine degree angle. Doing it on the table saw is all but impossible because it's gonna sit too high. So I've got my bandsaw set to nine degrees. Let's go test the angle. 8.9, close enough for me. <laughs> now I can glue this piece up with the rest of these. Come on, get him, get him. Hey man, we're running behind. What do you need from me? Uh, sorry man, I am just obsessed with playing this game, but you're right. Let's get to work. Um, there's a couple more things we need to do. Somewhere over the miter station. I wonder how many people unsubscribe every time. I start singing. So earlier I glued up a walnut panel for the seat base, which I'm gonna carve over on the CNC. And speaking of walnut trees, I don't trust them. They seem shady. Yeah, That's pretty good. It's pretty good, I like it. Come on, baby. Rock like Holy moly, good. yeah. <laughs> The base is made out of maple, and these parts are going to get cut down on Owen Wilson. Wow, 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 Also, those arms and back support are made out of maple, which my robot is cutting out now, and these are all going to attach to the seat with 10 of these three-quarter inch maple dowels on either side. Some people have two left feet. My uh, dumb ass carved two left arms. Oh, darkness, my old friend. Double checking here. <laughs> This is what we're about to carve. That looks like it's the right arm. Even I make mistakes. Rarely, rarely do I make them, but I do make them. Let me take a second and kind of explain what I'm doing. These are the armrests. 
And when I machine these on the CNC, I have to do it from this side. That way I can get all the holes for the uh, individual dowels. What I want to do to tie in her desk and the bed is both of those pieces have this like inset inlaid epoxy detail. So I want to do that on the armrest of her chair. In order to do that, I have to be able to find a perfect work zero. What I've done is I've got this board and then I had that cut out this, this pocket that's gonna be the exact thickness. Then I know that I've got my work zero. That CNC bit, when I push the button, is gonna go back right here to this corner. And let's try this, see if it actually fits. Oh, man, that fits so well. I can send it back to carve that inlay and it's gonna know exactly where this piece is, in theory. Once that epoxy inlay groove is cut, I seal it with some Total Boat Gleam before doing those epoxy pours. And while I've been busy trying to get stuff done, what's Jeff been doing this whole time? Get him. Yeah. Ooh. Dude, I told you the game was addictive. Join the 80 million people that have already downloaded the best mobile game out there, and that's Raid Shadow Legends, the sponsor of today's video. I may be in my 40s, but you're never too old to nerd out on some really fun mobile gaming. And Raid Shadow Legends has the best action, the best graphics, and the best gameplay around. And I'm a super competitive person, so when I play Raid Shadow Legends, I don't just wanna beat people, I wanna dominate them. I'm always trying to win new champions, upgrade and outfit the champions that I already have, and then destroy my opponents in battle. Level up your champions by completing campaigns where you can earn tons of XP, silver, and some artifacts along the way. And right now, get ready for the 12 days of raid during the holiday season lasting until January 10th. New and existing players alike can win holiday-themed champions and even Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000. And right now, raid is releasing a special champion based off of MMA and pro wrestling goddess Ronda Rousey. And you can get the Ronda champion for free just by playing for seven days between now and February 20th. That's literally all there is to it. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, just click that link down in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen and you'll get bonuses worth up to 35 bucks. And we're talking an epic champion, Joe Tun. 100,000 silver, 50 gems, and two epic skill tomes. And all that treasure will be waiting for you here, available for the next 30 days for new players only. And once you're in the game, come find me under the username Johnny Builds, and if you're fast enough, you can join my clan. Jeff, you just gonna keep working all day in your wizard getup? Yep. Well, okay. Oh, God. Oh, shit. I thought I had a thing. Step one when pouring epoxy, wear gloves. If the epoxy looks a bit pink, it's because I added some purple pigment and that offsets the hardener that had yellowed over time. The purple actually negates the yellow and then when I add the white pigment, it's nice and bright. Also, check out this behind the scenes shot of Jeff shooting a reel of this epoxy pour for Instagram. You can find me over there at Johnny Builds. And if you're not following me on Instagram, really, you should be ashamed of yourself. So pause this video right now, go give me a follow, and then come back. I'll wait. This piece connects to the armrest and wraps around the back of the seat to support it. But I didn't love how thick it was, so here I'm cutting it down on the bandsaw. I'm gonna attach it with screws, which I'll hide with some dowels. So first I'm cutting a half inch hole in the drill press for those dowels. Okay, so this is one of those glue ups that I've done in the past that give me a lot of difficulties. So this time I actually uh, made these clamping blocks to uh, go with this piece. I used glue for the joints and then waited for that to get tacky, just like your mom. And then I can come back and drive in some two inch screws. Feels pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's for twist. So one of the seat back sections was a leftover scrap from a CNC carve gone wrong. And this left me with a hole in the back of the seat. But I was able to plug this with a piece of walnut. And after sanding, you can't even tell it was there. What do you think is your like most underrated song. She's Gone by Hollow Notes probably. Sing it. She's Gone. Mine is gonna be Lovely Day by uh, one Mr. Bill Withers. In the comments, leave your most underrated song. I'll pick the best one 
and I'll pin you to the top of the comments. I don't want any sharp edges on this piece, so pretty much every edge gets a heavy round over and sanding. I also had to sand in a slight angle on the seat back support, and that accounts for the nine degree angle of lean for the chair back and allows it to fit down inside. Here I'm adding some dowels to temporarily connect the seat to the armrest, and this was so I could test fit that seat back, which fit like a... Too soon? The base has a center column made from maple, and I made them so I could stack the pieces after they come off the CNC. I also added this half inch hole so I could use a dowel, which allows me to keep the pieces aligned during the glue up. Now, something I've never tried before is a sliding dovetail joint, so I figured why not complicate this build even more and try that out. Now, the center sections had the majority of the dovetail cut out on the CNC, but the CNC bit can't make that tight corner, so I had to cut the rest on the router table using this dovetail bit. And then I can add the match matching male dovetail to the four legs. To join the chair to the base, my idea is to use this three quarter inch carbon steel rod that I ordered from McMaster Car. My name is Rod and I like to party. And this rod was 36 inches long, but I only needed this eight inch section. So I cut that down on my metal bandsaw. That's gonna get welded with an eighth inch steel plate, which here I'm drilling out a three quarter inch hole so I can plug weld the rod to it. And now you can see how that center steel rod will be held in place by this plate, which is gonna get attached to the underside of the chair later on. Now to hold the rod in place, I got these steel bushings and they have a three quarter inch inside diameter and an inch and a quarter outside diameter. And that matches the center hole on the base sections. They fit pretty snugly, but I did use some four minute epoxy to hold them in place permanently. what's up? All right, it's time to begin assembling the chair, but before I do, I have a few more finishing touches such as rounding over the top of the seat back. Back to the base, I'm gluing the legs using these sliding dovetails, but it quickly became apparent the dovetail joints were just a bit loose. So I'm adding some screws to the top and the bottom of the joint, and this seemed to work just as well. If you're gonna grade my first try at sliding dovetails, I definitely get an F, but an F plus. I will try this again in a future build because I want to get this right and it's a really cool technique. The last steps to building the base are adding this lower cap to the center column and attaching the feet with glue and dominoes. For the connection to the seat, I realized some extra support was needed, so I added these tapered wings, I guess you could call them. Don't forget to check out our sweet Johnny Builds merch, including the exclusive wing at T for those times when you just have to get done no matter what. So if you watched the bed video, you saw those maple dowels that I cut down for the curved headboard and I saved all those offcuts. And luckily I had just enough for this project. First, I glued them into the underside of the armrest and then used this detail sander to clean up any glue squeeze out before it dried. And these things are super handy. I'll make sure to drop a link for these down in the description so you can pick up a set. Also, if you watched the bed video, that glue up on the headboard was crazy stressful, but this one actually went pretty smoothly. And I think it's because I learned a bunch of stuff from that glue up and I was able to mitigate it on this one. I did add a slight bit of extra tolerance to the holes in the seat, which also made lining up the dowels so much easier than on the bed. I let that glue dry overnight and then glued the back into place on top of the seat. This thing is finally coming together. Uh, I'm excited. Should just fit right in there. Oh yeah, oh, that's satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, okay, dude. Getting back to the bench, I had a few steps to wrap it up, starting with cutting the slab down to final size. I need to add some bow tie inlays to this to uh, stop these cracks from spreading. I've done bow ties before, but never by hand. Just because I pretty much don't have time to do this and I'm a glutton for punishment, I'm gonna try my first hand cut dovetails on this piece. I'm using that off cut of red oak from the slab to make the bow ties. And I really wanted this to be a more subtle feature. Now you can buy pre-made bow ties online, which are gonna be much more symmetrical than these. But I figured, hey, if I was gonna be inlaying these by hand, I might as well make them by hand.
So after watching a 10 second TikTok bow tie tutorial, I was ready to do some museum quality bow tie inlays. I just used some CA glue to attach the bow ties initially and then use my utility knife to scratch in the outline. And then I come back with a router to remove most of the waste. Holy shit, I did it. Surprise even yourself sometimes, Johnny. Oh, it looks good, man. I looks really, really, good. really like the subtleness of it. Yeah. I'm what you would call humble. I'm not one to brag upon myself, but I am probably the most humble person that you've ever seen before. So uh, yeah, cheers to that. Cheers to me. So working on the bench base, I'm adding some heavy roundovers before assembling the base and the center stretcher with dominoes. I just picked up some of this Total Boat Total Gold paint, and this stuff is amazing. Like, you do have to mix it like crazy, but it's super metallic. And after painting the base, it didn't even really look like it was made out of wood. It looked like it was a piece of metal. So I'm a huge fan of this paint, and I'll make sure to leave a link for that down below. The bench is done, but the sad part is I ran out of time on the chair. But here, I'll explain. It's Christmas Eve and I came to the shop to finish this chair, make the cushions, and this is the foam that I ordered. I ordered 48 inches of it, which would have been enough to uh, cover the seat and the back. They sent me 28 inches. Now I can't get this done in time for Christmas. Here's my plan. I am going to give Chloe the bench tomorrow and then I'll just tell her, hey, look, there's another project coming, but it's gonna take me a couple more days. It'll be after Christmas. I'm just a complete failure as a father, a woodworker, YouTuber, human being, other things. <laughs> so I didn't get your actual gift done in time. My actual gift? Mm -hmm. The whole time I've been building a secret project. So there's like, there's something else? I'll be finished with it in a couple days. I was oh. so close. <laughs> Put something else on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I didn't have any walnut dowels, so I'm making some with this dowel plate, which is a really easy way to make your own dowels. I'll make sure I'll drop a link for this down in the description below. Using some wood glue and some CA glue, I use these half inch dowels to fill the screw holes on the back of the chair. If you remembered, I glued the back of the seat and now I'm adding three two inch screws from the underside to help strengthen that connection. Now I did try to think of something clever to say while I'm drilling these holes, but in reality, drilling is just boring. <laughs> this is a piece of eighth inch HDPE. I'm going to lay it out on this, cut out the same shape, and that way I don't have wood on wood contact rubbing and creating friction. The center post gets attached with some four minute epoxy and a couple screws to hold it in place. Earlier in the build, I was worried about the strength of this connection, but at this point, I'm pretty confident this is gonna hold the seat on top of the base nice and sturdy. Ha <laughs> 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 Yes! Holy shit, it worked. Yes! Mostly me. And I'm just gonna speed through the cushion building process because honestly, I hated these cushions and was really disappointed with the way they looked on the chair, but I'll explain more about that here in a minute. We use these big old shears, these Brittany shears. Oh baby, baby, I want you to cut my foam. Uh, oh, ooh, it's actually not bad. Like if you were in prison and this was your mattress, you would be okay, you would enjoy prison. Uh, cushions are done and I hate them. They look like shit. 
So that fits nice, but these pleats look terrible. And this one looks awful too. But the nice thing is, is the way the cushions are, locks them into place. I'm out of time. I have to give this to Chloe tomorrow. I'll give it to her as is. I'm gonna find a seamstress to make some nice professional cushions. We gotta put some finish on it, and then we'll go see if Chloe likes it. And I'm just gonna use some uh, Total Boat Wood Honey. This is the perfect finish for something like this. I know you did not want me to build you a chair. <laughs> you actually made a comfy chair. I like it. It's Dude. really good. I love the color. <laughs> I love that it's pink. I'm gonna oh. do my homework right here. I can even sit in my weird position. This is how I sit when I do my homework. <laughs> People that watch this video, what should they do? Tell the like and subscribe and comment. Okay. Yeah, perfect. perfect. <laughs> now you have to, she said it. <laughs>